So what the fuck is Fort Wink? By the way, I love this book. Violet Sarangale, the black sheep of the dragon riding siblings, wanted to be a scribe like her father. Her father passed away and her mother, General Lilith Sarangale, decided that Violet should trade her quill for dragon scales. Violet's sister, Mira, argues with their mother about Violet's readiness for the Rider Squadron in Basgaya. That's a war college where riders bond with dragons to protect no, never from its enemies, including nations employing griffons. Mira knew as well as anyone that Violet had about as much chance of passing the dragon riding tests as a penguin winning a swimming race. And after the unfortunate passing of Brennan during the uprising, Mira wasn't exactly keen on adding another sibling to the dragon riding casualty list. Resigned to her fate, Violet packs her bag, alongside her prized books, including a fable collection from her dad, because nothing says but already like fairy tales. Mira, ever the practical sister, takes her books away and takes her out with dragon scale armor, dagger thingies and combat boots. Mira delivers a Shakespearean warning about avoiding Zayden Ryerson, the rebel leader's son, executed by their mother and to seek out their childhood buddy Dane Athos. While ascending the stairs to the parapet, Violet encounters Rhiannon and swaps left boots to ensure they both have one with good grip, because really, what are friends for if not preventing potential slip and fall catastrophes? At the tippy toe of the parapet, Violet sees a handsome man and is thinking, hmm, who's that hottie? And of course, that's Satan, the brooding bad boy of Dragon School. He doesn't attack her, but only makes snarky comments. During her crossing, Jack Barwow is chasing Violet on the parapet, like a cat after a mouse with murder in his eyes. But Violet, ever the hero in her own story, crosses the parapet and takes her daggers out, pointing at his groin. Violet seeks her childhood pal Dane, the second-tier sensation and squad leader, but instead of a warm welcome, Dane tries to talk Violet out of her dragon-riding dreams from 10 minutes ago. Zayden, the rebel without the cause turned wing leader, swoops in and takes command of Dane's squad, faster than a seagull snatching a french fry. As classes kick off, Violet realizes she is about as strong as a limp noodle. With Rhiannon as her personal sensei, Violet becomes a warrior in training ready to take on the world. Mira has a surprise in her bunk bed, Brennan's journal from his rider days. Reading it, Violet remarks the sparring schedule in advance. Violet starts leveling the playing field by slipping her opponents a little something extra before their matches. Sneaking out after curfew to collect deadly berries, Violet finds herself tangled in more than just vines when she overhears Zayden and his marked minions talking. Gathering more than three marked ones is illegal. Hightailing it up a tree to avoid detection, she's feeling pretty smug, but they are just making sure they look after each other. When everyone else departs, Violet believes she is safe, until Zayden's shadows hop like over-eager puppies. Caught like a deer in headlights, Violet denies any snitching intentions, but Zayden playing the debt card like a pro gambler, grudgingly admits he owes her one. Violet's winning streak in challenge matches isn't exactly a fairy tale victory, more like a poison lace in the real story. But when her opponent falls sick ahead of the fifth match, it's Zayden to the rescue, swooping in like a knight in, well, probably not shining armor. He disarms her faster than you can say, oops, there go the daggers, but it's all in the name of combat education. In the clash of blades and steamy tension, Zayden drops the bombshell, he's on to her poisoning tactics. Violet's gauntlet journey becomes a roller coaster ride of doubts, loopholes, and dagger wielding shenanigans. Dane's suggestions of switching quadrants is met with a buzzing nope from Violet, causing tension hotter than a dragon's breath between them. But fear not, Zayden swoops in with wisdom and as smooth as a buttered potato, reminding Violet that success comes in more flavors, not just vanilla. And when it's showtime, Violet makes it her own personal jungle gym with a dagger as her trusty sidekick. But Amber enters stage left with a look that could spoil milk, upset by Violet's rule bending and but everything's fine, Violet can go get her dragon. Now on to trashing, a dragon dating extravaganza. But wait, drama alert. Violet overhears Jack or an entertainment wanting to slay the golden dragon. Violet rushes to the field only to find Zayden the powerless observer. She intervenes and protects the dragon, sustaining injuries in the process. Zayden and his dragon Segeo witness the fight and Tyrion, the biggest black dragon, arrives and eliminates one of the attackers. Violet forces a bond with Tyrion and the little golden dragon, Andarna, becoming the first rider to bond with two dragons. And just when things couldn't get any crazier, Dane plants a smooch on Violet like he's won the dragon lottery. But alas, Violet's heart remains as unmoved as a rock in a pond. It's a beautiful night, Violet finally has a room and can't rest and boom, several cadets led by Amber attempt to assassinate Violet in her sleep after failing to bond with dragons. Amber, the wink leader turned chicken, makes a run for it when she realizes Violet's ready to rumble. But fear not, Andarna hits the pause button on time allowing Zayden to intervene and save her. Violet discovers that Zayden's dragon Segeo, it's mates with Tarin. 
Xayden. But wait, there's more. Violet and Xayden are now sorta bonded. The catch? If one kicks the bucket, they both might bite the dust. To top it all off, they weren't the Tandarna, the golden feather tail, it's just a baby dragon, like a toddler with wings. Feather tails are as rare as a unicorn at a petting zoo. And here's the kicker. Humans can leech the power of feather tails and potentially destroy them. Tyrion and Segeo trust Violet and Xayden with this info like the squirrel trusts its nuts to stay hidden. In a twist that's more dramatic than a soap opera plot twist, Violet spills the beans to Zayden about Amber's dirty deeds. Zayden gathers the wing leaders to put Amber on trial, but hold on to your hats because Dane's playing detective like a kid with a magnifying glass, trying to read Violet's memories like they're a mystery novel. Not to fear though, Violet calls in the big guns, aka Taryn, to send her memories straight to the wing leader's brains like a telepathic slideshow. And uh, Amber's fate? And just when Violet thinks life can get any more complicated, Zayden shuffles the squad like a deck of cards, assigning his foster brother Liam to guard her like a royal knight gathering a treasure chest. Meanwhile, Imogen, the second-tier rebel, steps in to help Violet bulk up. Violet's flying lessons are more crash landing than smooth up health, with Tyrion trying to hold her in place with magic like a hesitant seatbelt. One evening, things heat up, literally, when Violet realizes Tyrion and Segeo are getting frisky in disguise. Violet running outside to cool down only to bump into Zayden, who's puffing away on something to chill out. With sparks flying faster, Violet and Zayden lock lips, however, he stops their interaction, mindful that Violet cannot consent while under Tyrion's influence, and sends her to a room. Violet Squad wins some challenges and visits Montserrat outpost for a week, where Mira is stationed. Mira gives Violet her book of fables. Zayden joins them after three days due to dragon bonding problems. While there, Griffon's attack forcing an early departure. Mira remains behind to confront the threat and survives. Violet questions Zayden about his whereabouts during a past curfew violation, to which he simply replies, at the bind, at the bind, at the Thanks to their dragon's bond, Violet and Zayden communicate telepathically. Tyrion and Zayden present Violet with a customized saddle addressing her struggles with riding Tyrion. Initially hesitant, Violet eventually tries it and finds joy in its comfort and fit. In a shocking turn of events, Events during practice battle, Violet's dragon gives her finally with the ability to wield whitening, like a discount door. But oopsie daisy, she accidentally zaps poor Jack into oblivion. But we're not sad about that. He was trying to kill Liam, and since the parapet was plotting how to hurt and eliminate Violet. Later in a scene straight of a teenage rom-com, Violet is busy throwing daggers at her bedroom wall, like she is auditioning for the next Assassin's Creed game, when Zayden barges in. They exchange words. He expresses that he doesn't want to complicate matters or cause her pain, but Violet insists she can handle herself and disregards his concerns. And then it gets steamy. Violet is prepared to acknowledge her feelings for Zayden, but he's not on the same page yet. During Besgaia's anniversary celebration of the rebellion's end, Violet finds Zayden on the parapet and he emphasizes with his pain. Their relationship deepens emotionally and romantically as a result. And it gets steamier. In the dead of night, Gary crashes the party like a hyperactive raccoon, proclaiming doom and gloom faster than you can say midnight madness, saying they are under attack. Zayden has Violet his flight jacket and everyone are like, aha! But wait, plot twist, it's just a drill folks, the ultimate dragon school prank known as the War Games. Originally slated to accompany Dane in her squad, Violet joins Zayden instead as their dragons cannot endure prolonged separation. Outside Adevan, Zayden and Violet share a fleeting kiss before they are interrupted by a group of Griffon riders. In a plot twist wilder than a squirrel on a unicycle, Violet discovers Zayden and the other rebels been playing secret agent. They have been providing the Griffon riders with weapons. In a moment of serious drama, Violet confronts Zayden, ready to give him a piece of her mind. But before she can unleash her verbal fury, he drops a bombshell bigger than Dragon's knees that Griffon riders aren't the real baddies. They are actually allies against the Venice those nasty creatures straight out of Violet's bedtime stories. Upon arrival at Atebhain, they discover a cryptic message from Colonel Athos, that's Dane Athos' father. Turns out Dane's been reading her memories like a book club in a library. It's disclosed that Dane discovered Zayden mentioning Atebhain in Violet's memories and reported it to his father. Faced with an imminent threat of Venin attack, they must decide whether to defend the nearby town or seek refuge with other riders in the war games. They decide to stay and fight. They realize that they are not only Venin but Wyverns. This. In a fierce battle against the Venin, the group struggles and suffers losses, including Liam's dragon and Liam himself. The devastating blow breaks both Zayden and Violet's hearts. Andarna enters the fray like superhero on caffeine using her time stopping powers. Pressing on, Violet discovers a way to neutralize multiple Wyverns ta -ta, by targeting the controlling Venin, and Violet finds herself poisoned faster than a kid downing a glass of expired milk. But fear not for our Violet, it's whisk away to a hewer, like a damsel in distress being rescued by her knight in shining armor, except this time 
it's her not so dead brother Brennan playing doctor. And just when Violet thinks things couldn't get any crazier, Xanon tries to explain the whole mess like a politician caught up in a scandal. But Violet's like, I can't trust you anymore. You've got more secrets than a magician at a magic show. And let's talk about sibling reunions that are more surprising than finding a pineapple on pizza. Brennan's like, welcome to the rebellion seats. As if joining a secret resistant movement is as casual as joining a book club. <laughs> the choice of family dynamics. And what should I do next?